Hey friends, I have another collection video for you sharing some fall harvest deco mesh wreaths. Now I'm also going to show in these wreaths, I'm going to show you how I created the sign as well. All right, guys, I am so glad that you are here. Let's go ahead and get started. One of my favorite things to do is get these farm fresh pumpkin trucks from the Dollar Tree and paint them up, add some of my hand lettering as well as cute embellishments and make them part of wreath attachments. So I'm gonna show you here real quick what I do to paint the truck. Now I had already had this one painted black as well as uh, just use some light gray paint to uh, put the glass like the back glass as well as the bumper then to bring it out a bit more I like to add some shading to my painted projects how I do that is just use a flat paintbrush this is probably a quarter inch flat paintbrush and I dip half of my brush in paint the other half in clean water I go around kind of like a around the edges just to bring it out and give it some character and dimension. Now for the back glass, what I'm gonna do use uh, is this color is slate gray. And, uh, but you know, it really doesn't matter. These are just really the colors that I'm using that, you know, followers or people who view the videos or want to know exactly what colors I use. So I just go around the back glass just to bring it out and give it some definition. So then uh, I will also do that right here. I like to, you know, also bring out some character of the tires just use the flat paintbrush and uh, just do some shading to add some treads to my tires I use my uh, fan brush and just dip a little bit of that into the white paint just to give it some treads of the tires now I'm going to add a glare to my back glass and I achieved that by using this shimmer silver metallic paint and I just take a uh, just a paintbrush and just go along the glass just to give it some glare and I'm not really like being very precise, just kind of hitting the high points just to give it a glare. Now I'm just using a number two liner brush and just dipping it in white paint and going along uh, the back that glass just to add some additional character and some doodling with my uh, white liner brush. Just going around, it, this is just something that I like to do. I just really feel that it, this just really is kind of like one of my signatures and I'm so grateful that the Lord has sent so many country loving hand painted uh, painting friends to my channel because you like it as well. Now, this is just a brief overview of how I created this truck and how I hand lettered it. If you would like a slow um, version of it, I will have a separate video like I have started doing because I have been getting lots of feedback that lots of friends do like that. Those of you that are interested in learning how to hand letter and learn how to paint like this, I will give, uh, I will provide the slower version, walk you through from start to finish of how I created this truck as well as how I hand lettered. So just check out that video. Um, I will have it on my channel and just make my letters like this. I like the happy dots. Now, if you're interested uh, in learning how to do this, you can't, there is a free font called Gel Dotica. I have shared this many times, but I will continue to share it that if it's something that uh, friends would like to learn, you can download the font, um, you know, onto your computer and practice from there. All right, so then once my um, hand lettering or the happy fall is dry, I am just taking a, a small round paintbrush and this antique gold paint and just going around just to give it some highlight of each of the letters. Now I'm going to add some splattering because that's what I like to do. I do splattering of black first, then I'll go back over it with white and uh, just add that country look to my painted projects. Make sure and cover your area because splattering does get messy. All right, to embellish my truck, I'm using these small hay bales. Now the one on the right is from the Dollar Tree 
And if you can't find those, Hobby Lobby has them as well. And I love these little hay bales. I'm going to add them to the back of my truck. To have something for my embellishments to stick into, I just took some styrofoam, cut it down, and glued it to the back of the truck. I painted it black so that it would all blend in. Then I took some fine excelsior, which is like Spanish moss, and covered up that styrofoam so that it looks a bit whimsy. Now to get my hay bales to stick into the styrofoam, I'm just using some toothpicks, and I'm just, uh, using my uh, paper piercer just sticking a hole in it and I stuck that toothpick in it glued it just to make sure that everything was secure and then I stuck it into that uh, styrofoam. I also stuck in some pumpkins that I got from the Dollar Tree. Then now I'm just using some fall foliage. Um, I had this in my stash and just sticking a bit of that in there as well. I'm also using some of these small sunflowers that I got from the Dollar Tree and just sticking that in the styrofoam just to make everything so nice and festive. For my deco mesh wreath, I'm using this 14 inch frame from the Dollar Tree as well as these two 10 inch mesh and some tan pipe cleaners. I'm going to cut my mesh with my rotary cutter. Now what I do is I uh, roll them out on my mat and I uh, roll out and measure 12 inches. These uh, 10 inch mesh came from Hobby Lobby. And uh, what I do to make my cruffles is I roll over one end, I clip it and roll over the other end. I make like a taco. <laughs> That's kind of what it kind of puts me in the mind of. And uh, this is how I make my ruffles and then I will make my bundles. I will put those two together and make like a X pattern. And uh, that is what I will clip together and put into, uh, you know, into my pipe cleaners to put on the frame. And so I just start somewhere and just uh, with a pipe cleaner and just start putting uh, the ruffles, uh, the bundles in there. Um, since I'm using two 10 inch mesh, I have 21 of these bundles that I'm gonna put on this frame. Now these are the ribbons that I used in this wreath. I used some two and a half inch as well as some one and a half inch. And I'll tell more about those when I get to them. Now these three right here, uh, I used, uh, let's see, this burlap two and a half inch came from Michael's and the Buffalo check two and a half inch, I think that came from Michael's as well. Now the burlap with the Buffalo check on the ends came from Hobby Lobby. And uh, what I like to do is is I like to put three of these two and a half inch together. I crisscross them and then I use my tiny attacher, my little stapler to put a small staple in the middle and that just helps uh, me gather it like that. The next set that I'm going to use are these right here. Those came, let's see, the window pane came from Hobby Lobby. The uh, sunflower came from Craft Outlet and the black and white uh, check came from from Hobby Lobby and so I was just kind of showing you there how I'm going to position them into the pipe cleaner and so the uh, window pane I don't dovetail those I dovetail all of my other ribbons but my window pane I do not and so I just position the ribbon like that and just put that one and a half inch um, 
you know, at the angle like that and put it into the wreath. Okay, this set right here is uh, two and a half inch, that black and white uh, that came from Craft Outlet. And uh, well, both of these came from Craft Outlet and I'm gonna put these two together. And so then what I'm sharing here, these I just kind of put my bundles together so that they're all ready to go when I'm gonna put them into the wreath. Uh, since this is a country fall wreath, I'm using some raffia and I like to get this raffia from Walmart. I just take um, a few strands of those and just make just some uh, loops and just use some extra pipe cleaners just to make, uh, you know, I don't even know if they were these little bundles like this. Anyway, so that is what I'm going to put into. My, to start putting my ribbon bundles on, I'm using three sets of different ribbons. And so this uh, burlap bundle right here, this is what I'm going to uh, put the raffia into. And what I like to do is, uh, you know, twist my pipe cleaner and then I will cut it off and then I will seal it with a dot of hot glue just to make sure that everything stays nice and, uh, you know, stays nice together so that it doesn't come apart. And then I always fluff out my ribbons and make sure that nothing is, you know, bend it underneath. And then for the next set, I'm going to use uh, these right here, this uh, window pane and the sunflower. And then this one and a half inch, the black and white. Uh, I just put that in there. I twist the pipe cleaner, seal it off with a hot, uh, dot of hot glue. And then uh, as you can see, that one, uh, that was the second set. I went up like in a zigzag pattern. I go I put one down, one up, one down, one up, like in a zigzag pattern. And then that is how I start putting on my ribbons until I get all the way around the wreath. I will just continue to put this ribbon into this wreath until I get all of my ribbon in. I had cut seven sets of each style. I usually put three sets of ribbons in it. And so um, that is what this looks like with all of those put in there. Okay, for my truck, I went back and added just a few glittery pumpkins in there. I just think it adds a bit of sparkle. And to attach my truck to uh, the wreath frame, I'm just using these one inch 
uh, cable ties that I get from Amazon. You can find those in my Amazon shop if you uh, are interested in that. And so I just attach it, you know, to the frame and make sure that it's secure. And then uh, these sunflowers I got from Hobby Lobby in the fall section. And so I just cut off sprigs of those. And then I add um, just some steel picks on the ends of them because I feel that it does give uh, a bit more stability. And so I just hot glue those in between the mesh just to make sure everything is nice and secure. Hey friends, in today's video, I'm sharing how I made this cute fall wreath that is sharing some leopard pumpkins from Hobby Lobby. I will also share how I put my 10 inch deco mesh on the wreath form, as well as my ribbons that I chose for this wreath. I'm also gonna give you some tips of how I put my embellishments into my deco mesh wreaths and give you some, you know, tips and tricks of what works for me. Guys, if you're returning, Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Tracy. I love to share crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm, just like today's project. I hope you'll consider subscribing before you leave today's video. All right, let's go ahead and get started and let me share how I created this fall pumpkin wreath. Here's a quick overview of how I made the wreath. I have a 14 inch gold frame from Dollar Tree as well as two 10 inch mesh, my rotary cutter and some pipe cleaners. So what I do is I just roll these out together. Uh, I measure out 12 inches and then I just cut them um, all at the same time. Each wreath maker does theirs a little different, but this is just what works for me. And I am cutting 20 bundles of these two 10 inch mesh. And these 10 inch mesh came from Hobby Lobby. Now to make my uh, cruffles or my ruffles, I just uh, take it and bend it over two times. I clamp it. Those little clamps came from the Dollar Tree. I gather it in the middle to make the ruffle. I clamp it. I do the other one the same way and just uh, fold it over two times. I clamp it and then um, fold the other side. And then I'm going to stack them together. I make an X pattern and just, um, I like to like get all of my ruffles, you know, done. And then I uh, use those clamps from the Dollar Tree that I get from the laundry section. They open very wide and it just helps me uh, with my wreath making for these, you know, little things like this. And so then I just take, take a pipe cleaner and then I just thread it on, on. And I usually start in the outer, I mean, in the inner ring, I start in the inner ring and then I move to the outer ring and I am going to put 20 of these bundles on this frame. So I will continue to put on my bundles until I get all the way around the wreath. And so this is what 21 bundles looks like on this wreath form. Okay, here are my ribbons that I'm gonna be putting into this wreath. I either cut them at 13 inches or 12 inches. I like to cut the two and a half 
at, uh, inch at 13 inches and then the one and a half at 12 inches. And uh, so what I do is I usually make some bundles like this. Like I just take the extra time to fold these, have them together so that all I have to do is open up my pipe cleaners and put them on my wreath. I'm using uh, three sets of ribbons because I don't know, I just like the three sets to uh, put into my wreaths because I feel that it just really gives it different um, you know, color and texture and, you know, just with all the different patterns, I just mix everything up. And so I like to use the two and a half inch and the one and a half inch together. I usually cut the one and a half inch, um, just a, uh, an inch smaller so that it lays a little bit better. All right. Most of my ribbons either came from Hobby Lobby, Walmart, uh, Craft Outlet, Michaels, uh, you know, and so, uh, these right here, the Big Dot came from Craft Outlet, the Leopard came from Michaels, the uh, Window Pane came from Hobby Lobby. I'm using my Tiny Attacher. Y'all heard, heard me say this in my videos. I like to use this. It puts a very tiny staple in it so that I can grab it, gather it, and go and just put it into my pipe cleaner so i have my sets ready to go i choose to uh you know streamline this or you know multitask so i have everything ready to go when i put them into my wreaths i put them in at a tic-tac-toe pattern and uh that way you know i have a little of this and a little of that and so this uh these ribbons right here either came from craft outlet or either Hobby Lobby. And so I do the same thing. I am just putting them, uh, you know, putting my bundles together and having them all ready to go. Okay, as I mentioned, I put my ribbons in a tic-tac-toe pattern in my wreath, I just open up the pipe cleaners and I stick them in there because I like to have them alternating. And so it's not really hard. Uh, it's just, you know, you can kind of look at the wreath just to see. I just put them in at a tic-tac-toe pattern. Okay, uh, the other embellishments that I'm using in this wreath are these adorable leopard pumpkins that I picked up from uh, Hobby Lobby. I'm also using some uh, foam pumpkins that I picked up from the Dollar tree. I'm also using one of these welcome signs that I created uh, using my Cricut. And so um, I'm just going to share just briefly, really quick here. I do have a, a full tutorial from start to finish of how I created this welcome sign. I will link to that in the description below uh, if you would like to see exactly, you know, a slower version. But this is just a really quick overview of how I created this welcome sign. I just love using my Cricut die cutting machine for uh, little signs like this as well as painting. It's just a great alternative. Okay, so to attach my sign, I use these cable ties that I get from Amazon. You can find them in my Amazon store if you're interested in something like this. Uh, and I just uh, put two of them, glue them to the back, and then uh, using some pipe cleaners, I thread it on and I attach my sign. Um, as I mentioned, I want to share how I put my pumpkins in my wreath. All right, so the uh, pumpkins are foam, and so I put a hole in it using either my paper piercer or I get something that is uh, pointy, and I put a hole in it, uh, and I have just some wood skewers that I get from, uh, you know, like the kitchen section of Walmart or Dollar Tree has them, that kind of thing. But I get some that are a little bit thicker uh, than, you know, very thin wood skewers. Anyway, and so I just use some of my Fabri-Tac glue just to glue those in. And I kind of put them at an angle so that when I put them into my wreath, they will kind of be at an angle. And uh, so what I do is I use Gorilla hot glue and I make sure that I go in between the layers and I figure out where I want to put my pumpkins and I go in between the layers and I make sure that they are really glued in and I just take some of the glue just to um, I, I don't like the glue to be showing but I just make sure that everything is glued and secure.
Then I will add some other embellishments like some berries and some wheat. Uh, I had some of these in my stash. I think I got these from Walmart and I just took them apart. Uh, I put a steel picks on the end of them so that I could, uh, I like this steel pick machine. I'm not saying that, you know, you need to go out and, and invest in a steel picks machine, but I did a long time ago and it puts a small pick on the end of it. If you want to learn how to use it, I will link to a very good tutorial uh, down below from Julie Samako of uh, Southern Charm Wreath. She has a, an excellent video that shares all about this uh, still picks stemming machine and uh, you can see if it's something that you want to invest in. Anyway, so I will just continue to add just some different embellishments like some flowers and uh, again I just take those apart and put some steel picks on the end of them. Those steel picks, um, they're, they're used in floral uh, like floral shops and that kind of thing and uh, it, you know, once it gets in between that deco mesh for me, I feel it's not going to come out, you know, and then I secure everything with the hot glue and I just, you know, stick everything in there. And, you know, you will hear me say the beauty is in the details and I just love adding all the different layers to my wreaths. And I'm so glad that you are here too and want to see how I do my country style wonderful wreaths. Anyway, I do a uh, design for a local gift shop here in my hometown. And uh, that's where I sell all of these beautiful designs. And it's so grateful that you're here and so grateful to the Lord for these talents that he has given. Next layer, I am using this 10 inch mesh as well. I consider this specialty mesh. It's not quite, it doesn't quite have as much on the roll. Uh, but what I do is I just roll it out and I'm measuring out 15 inches and uh, cut those out. And that is what I'm going to attach on top of the layers just to give a bit of this orange and white color. I do this layer the same way, but I'm rolling it over three different times uh, since this is a 15 inch uh, mesh, you know, the length of it. And so I just clamp those together and I like to have like the curls or the ruffles uh, in this, you know, with this specialty mesh. Th that's just what I call it. Um, that's the color that it gives. And then I just sporadically, well, I'm going around and I'm just putting, layering this in on top of, you know, the mesh that I already have there. And then I'm going to go around and include this in the entire wreath. For my ribbons, I'm using this two and a half inch ribbon from Michaels. I cut those at 13 inches. For the one and a half inch, uh, I am cutting those at 12 inches. The gold came from Hobby Lobby and all of the others may look familiar to you because I shared them recently in my Michaels haul. So then I take the time to uh, make my bundles like this. It just helps me uh, with my ribbon. It keeps everything together. So I have these two patterns uh, together. It may take a little bit more. It's a few extra steps, but I am all about streamlining. And when I'm ready to put my ribbon in my, uh, my wreath, I want to go ahead and just grab it and go. When I'm working with uh, two bundles of ribbon, 
Uh, I like do a tic-tac-toe pattern or a zigzag pattern. And so since this is a rustic fall wreath, I am also adding just some strips of raffia. Now this raffia came from Walmart. And uh, what I do is I just tie just little knots. Uh, sometimes I make a bow, but for this particular wreath, I just tied some knots in it. And uh, so then as I am putting in the ribbon, I just kind of, uh, you know, fold it just like that. And and untwist my uh, pipe cleaner and then put that in. Uh, I didn't mention earlier when I had shared that I cut my two and a half inch at 13 inches and the uh, one and a half inch at 12 inches. I do that because um, I like my top layer or my top ribbon to be a, uh, a little bit shorter so that it lays nicer. And so since I have been doing this, um, I like the way that it lays a little bit better and I don't waste as much ribbon because I ended up like cutting them and then I said why don't you just cut them shorter <laughs> anyway so it's just little tips and tricks that we pick up along the way that we watch other wreath makers the way that they do things you know we kind of just make it ourselves. Um, I am not a perfect wreath maker um, and nobody is, but we all pick up tips and tricks along the way. So I'm so glad that you are here watching my video today. For the center of my wreath, I'm using this green painted pumpkin that I did um, last year I do have a tutorial of how I painted it I will link to it in the description box below it is uh, something that I painted on my Facebook page so I do have a video for that if you would like to check out uh, from start to finish how I uh, you know painted the pumpkin and put the flowers on the top and all of that good stuff and I include all of my doodles and everything else. Anyway, so look for the description box uh, or the link in the description box below. To attach uh, my sign to my wreath, I'm using these uh, cable tie mounts. I do have them in my Amazon store if you would like to check out and get a bit more detail, but it is like if you don't have um, hangers for your sign or something to attach it to, it is great for something like this. Okay, now what I'm showing here is I am I added some pit berries. Y'all know I love me some pit berries. Oh yes, and this fall wreath was perfect with the pit berries. Okay, so then here now I am sharing how I um, added the pumpkin to the wreath. I just um, attached it with those cable ties with some pipe cleaners and attached it to the frame all right here I had these pumpkins in my stash and someone gave them to me I can't remember who what when where but anyway I um, you know had mentioned that I am trying to use up some of the things that I have and uh, anyway these pumpkins they almost have like a like a, a corn husk uh, like painted orange husk on the on around them I'm not quite sure where I got them from anyway but I just added some skewers uh, to the pumpkin I just glued those skewers in there and then I am attaching it around the wreath I added in different florals like this wheat and small flowers. I think these came from the Dollar Tree. And then these berries I did have on hand. Like I said, guys, I'm trying to use up some of the things that I do have. So I'm sorry that I don't know where that's at. But you can get all kind of fall florals and all kind of different things at Okay, sweet price. friend. If you have made it to this part of the video, God bless you. Thank you so very much for being one of my loyal uh, and dedicated friends. All right, guys, I love the way that this wreath turned out. Um, it will be going in the gift shop, like I said, that I do sell for. Anyway, I do like to share here on my channel for ideas and inspiration. Y'all have a great day. God bless. I'm starting with one of these pumpkin wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree. I took off the string and then I'm going to give it two coats of this Americana acrylic paint in the color Espresso.
to add my polka dots I have this set of uh, foam brushes that I picked up from Michaels and it has uh, different sizes of foam brushes in it I'm using the one inch foam circle brush as well as some spiced pumpkin acrylic paint and uh, just dipping that in I load up my sponge brush very you know where it's you know quite a bit in there and how I do my polka dots is I start in the middle of my project and then I work from there uh, I usually do like a one two and then I space them out accordingly and you know that way if I start in the middle I feel that my polka dots uh, are more even To add a bit of more uh, pizzazz, I'm just taking the end of a paintbrush, dipping it in that same orange spice pumpkin paint, and just doing three dots throughout the whole pumpkin. For this pumpkin, I'm using one of these from the Dollar Tree that come on a stand. I removed everything off of the pumpkin uh, and just took my sanding sponge and got off any of the excess glitter or anything like that. Now I'm taking my um, needle nose um, fine tip Sure Bonder glue gun and just a hot gluing some just some bulk or some dimension or some ribs of the pumpkins I've done this on other projects and I really like the way that it turned out uh, once I put the scrapbook paper on there this uh, white board scrapbook paper came from Hobby Lobby and so I just cut that out and then I'm going to adhere it once the hot glue is dry then I adhere it with some Mod Podge and I take my time and I just take my squeegee and just you know uh, make sure that my Mod Podge is uh, you know really covering and I just go around and just you know with my foam brush and just put some Mod Podge and just take that squeegee and just form it around the ribs of the pumpkin. The smallest pumpkin in this trio, I'm using one of these pumpkins off of the garland that had the footballs on it uh, from Dollar Tree. I just took off the paper and what helped me is just taking a wet wipe and laying it over there uh, on top of the pumpkin so that the paper would peel off easier. Uh, the paper I'm using is from this paper stack from Hobby Lobby. It's a lot of checks and gingham and you know just in fun colors and you know really speaks to my heart. So I just cut that out of this orange and white uh, scrapbook paper and then I'm going to do the same thing with uh, like I did with the other pumpkin just to make some ribs of the pumpkin. I just took my hot glue gun, uh, the smaller needle nose uh, sure Bonder hot glue gun that I got from Hobby Lobby works great for projects like this because I can get a very thin line and you know thicken it up as I want to uh, as I work on my projects. And guys, you know me, I can't stop there. I have to add some distressing and dimension to my pumpkins. So I just have my uh, ink pad. My vintage photo is the color. Um, you can get this at the craft store or I do have it linked in my Amazon store if you would like to have it shipped to you or get more details. But what I do is I just have a finger dauber. It just fits uh, on my finger and uh, it just helps with, uh, you know, putting ink on your projects like this. And I just go around to add some dimension. 
as well as some puffy paint. I have the colors orange and I have brown. The orange I'm gonna use for the smallest pumpkin and this just enhances the ribs of the pumpkins. This is just something that I like to do because you know, I just like to do all the extras and I am so grateful that the Lord has sent so many sweet friends to my channel that love this type, these type of projects as well. I am so grateful for you that are watching this. All right. So I did the orange and then now I'm doing the brown and I just go around the uh, pumpkin just to add dimension and just more character and cuteness to my pumpkins. Adding all of these extras to my projects really just kind of uh, makes me happy and it's what I do. Uh, just like splattering my projects and I am so grateful that so many sweet friends love this uh, technique or love this look as well. So guys, this is what I do to splatter my projects. I have some paint and um, a stiff brush, a toothbrush would work as well and I just have a stick, uh, just a craft stick and I just run the stick over the bristles of the stiff brush and uh, like pull the stick toward my body so that the paint goes on the project and I always make sure that I have a placemat or some kind of covering this right here is just brown paper that I got at uh, uh, Hobby Lobby and uh, so that my table or my surface is covered and so I uh, splatter the black paint first then I make sure that my brush is clean that it doesn't have any black paint in it and then I go back and I do the white paint so then um, also I'm going to add some uh, shading around the edge of my uh, pumpkin and I'm just doing that in black and how I shade is I just um, take a half inch flat paintbrush. I dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water, and I blend on a paper towel. I go around my project and just add some shading uh, to the edges of my project. Then to highlight and bring out the dots a bit more, I just have a round brush and I just go around each of the circles, just adding like a comma uh, or just a swipe just to highlight the polka dots. Then to add more because guys, y'all know I love to doodle and add squiggly lines and all of that good stuff because I just add, I just really think uh, the beauty is in the details of the projects, especially my painted projects. So I just have a very loved, very thin liner brush that I just go around and just add some squiggles or some doodles. Then I will add uh, some black Sharpie marker, which is my best friend. I do consider my fine Sharpie marker my best friend. So uh, to enhance my project a bit more, like I said, I do put a take a lot of time and um, do quite a few steps in my projects, but I do feel that uh, this just adds so much more to my painted projects. So I just go around all of the circles as well as the as the edges and uh, just add some black Sharpie marker for some doodling. Uh, I do that as well on these smaller pumpkins, just going around, just kind of hitting the high parts. I don't care if my lines are perfect. They don't, I'm not trying to be perfect. I just want them just to uh, just kind of have, just add a bit of the black color just to give it some doodling and just bring it out. We have to make a cute rustic bow for these pumpkins. So I'm using this uh, burlap from the Dollar Tree. Now for the larger pumpkin, I'm using the orange and I'm just taking my scissors and just cutting it down. Um, you know, a bit more so that I could handle it a little better. And so then I just use my glue gun and just uh, my um, masking tool to help 
because uh, since the burlap has holes in it, I don't want to burn my fingers. So I use that masking tool that I picked up from the Dollar Tree in the makeup section. That works great. And so then I just wrap the stem of the pumpkin with this orange burlap. I just did the same thing with the medium sized pumpkin, but I used the dark brown uh, burlap from the Dollar Tree. Um, I didn't show that on, you know, on video, but that's what I did. So then now for the smaller pumpkin, I'm just using the natural color burlap and I cut that burlap into three pieces so that I could work with it a bit, a uh, bit better. And so here you can kind of see all three of the pumpkins. I use the darker brown on the medium, the orange on the large one and the natural on the smaller pumpkin. We have to make a cute rustic bow for these pumpkins. So this is one I've already done. I'm going to share how I did it. I just used a bunch of different uh, burlap and strips of muslin. I have some pit berries. I also have some trim. I am using one of the paper colored, uh, uh, paper covered wires that I got uh, on sale from Walmart a few years ago, but I have since found uh, that they offer them over at Joe Joann's in the crafts section or the floral section over at Joann's craft store. So if you have one new year, maybe you can find some of these. Okay, so what I have here is I just have different, you know, laces. I cut some burlap. I cut some trim. My trims I get from the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby or Walmart. And so I'm just kind of layering them up. The pit berries came from Hobby Lobby. And so I am just layering them on kind of like a swag uh, and uh, to give it a bit of whimsiness, rustic whimsiness, if that's even, you know, a word, I'm just using some sisal twine and I just did uh, six loops, three on each side. And I just made a separate bow with the sisal twine and then that is going to be what's in the middle of my bow. I layer all of that on top and I just secure everything with a pipe cleaner. I want to make sure that this bow is real secure on this pumpkin and what I'm using is my crocodile and I'm using the smaller hole and uh, I just punched a hole in the pumpkin and then I threaded uh, the rest of the pipe cleaner through the back and then I secure it uh, with some glue just to make sure that it's tight on as well as glued on my pumpkin. Okay so this is how they these two look. I just love all the rusticness and uh, so here I'm going to share another where how I made the larger bow uh, because I do get lots of questions uh, or lots of comments to say you know um, how do you make your rustic bows so this video is sharing how I made the same bow but um, maybe you can pick up different uh, tips from you know just watching it again I have the um, wire that, you know, the paper covered wire, I'm using all of the same, you know, things, the same trim, the same pit berries and everything. And so here I'm showing, um, how I made the larger one. I just have the pit berries. I, you know, uh, turn them, you know, so that they, some pit berries would be coming out of both sides and I'm just layering up everything. I have the muslin fabric. It's just fabric that I got at the craft store. I just cut like, uh, or just tore off, uh, like one inch strips. And then I just have strips of that same burlap that I use to cover the stems of the pumpkins and uh, just strips of that and just doing an X pattern. I have all of these different laces, lace trims that I got from either Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Dollar Tree, anywhere that you can get these thin laces, uh, these lace trims from. 
And then I, you know, am doing the same thing uh, with my sisal twine. I just make a, a six loop bow, three loops on each side, and then I uh, secure it with a piece of the little sisal twine so that everything is nice and secure and uh, that it doesn't come unlooped or, un, uh, you know, and together and uh, so then I just layer everything together and secure it with a pipe cleaner. To attach the pumpkins together, I'm using this Fabri-Tac glue as well as some hot glue just to attach everything together. And for the small little sign, I'm using one of the Happy Fall uh, that came out of this pack from Hobby Lobby. It's already painted orange, which is perfect. And so I just attach that to the sign as well with some of that Fabri-Tac and some hot glue. The Fabri-Tac uh, glue is the permanent hold and the hot glue is the instant hold and um, what I did uh, is I do like to give my painted projects a sealer I like a glossy finish so I use this sealer it is my favorite and uh, I just you know brushed it over my projects just to give everything you know so everything is nice and finished here's a quick overview of how I made the wreath I have a 14 inch gold frame from Dollar Tree as well as two 10 inch mesh my rotary cutter and some pipe cleaners so what I do is I just roll these out together uh, I measure out 12 inches and then I just cut them um, all at the same time each wreath maker does theirs a little different but this is just what works for me and I am cutting 20 bundles of these two 10 inch mesh and these 10 inch mesh came from Hobby Lobby. Now to make my uh, cruffles or my ruffles, I just uh, take it and bend it over two times. I clamp it. Those little clamps came from the Dollar Tree. I gather it in the middle to make the ruffle. I clamp it. I do the other one the same way and just uh, fold it over two times. I clamp it and then um, fold the other side. And then I'm going to stack them together. I make an X pattern and just, um, I like to like get all of my ruffles, you know, done. And then I uh, use those clamps from the Dollar Tree that I get from the laundry section. They open very wide and it just helps me uh, with my wreath making for these, you know, little things like this. And so then I just take, take a pipe cleaner and then I just thread it on, on. And I usually start in the outer, I mean, in the inner ring, I start in the inner ring and then I move to the outer ring and I am going to put 20 of these bundles on this frame. Next layer, I am using this 10 inch mesh as well. I consider this specialty mesh. It's not quite, it doesn't quite have as much on the roll. Uh, but what I do is I just roll it out and I'm measuring out 15 inches and uh, cut those out. And that is what I'm going to attach on top of the layers just to give a bit of this orange and white color. Mm -hmm. 
I do this layer the same way, but I'm rolling it over three different times uh, since this is a 15 inch uh, mesh, you know, the length of it. And so I just clamp those together and I like to have like the curls or the ruffles uh, in this, you know, what this specialty mesh, th that's just what I call it. Um, that's the color that it gives. And then I just sporadically, well, I'm going around and I'm just putting, layering this in on top of, you know, the mesh that I already have there. And then I'm gonna go around and include this in the entire wreath. So I put a total of seven of these orange and white cruffles into the wreath. So depending on how much stuff you put on it depends on how big or how full your wreath is. Okay, these are the ribbons that I'm using. Um, the pumpkins and the brown and white polka dot came from Craft Outlet. The orange with the uh, burlap check came from Hobby Lobby. I measured them out at 13 inches and I dovetailed all of my ribbons. I almost always dovetail my ribbons. And so to make my bundles, um, I made 20 bundles and I use my tiny attacher, my little stapler. You may hear me mention that in a lot of my projects or a lot of my wreath projects. It just helps with, um, you know, it just makes my wreath making life a little bit easier. It just puts a tiny, tiny little staple in it. And I can, I like, to uh, streamline and I also like to multitask and you know kind of like make things a little bit easier for me anyway my the tiny attacher is in my Amazon store it, or you can buy it at any craft store in the scrapbooking section I also added some pit berries that I get from uh, Hobby Lobby from the fall section, as well as some raffia. I included that in the ribbon bundles. The raffia is from Walmart. Uh, now, I know I don't show here, but I made 20 of the ribbon bundles and I just attached them into each of the pipe cleaners. Uh, I do have other videos that I share, uh, you know, how I attach my ribbon and that kind of thing if you would like to check it out. So then what I'm showing here is how I put the a cable tie mounts on to my sign. I use a combination of uh, E6000 as well as hot glue. They are sticky, um, but I don't trust that. So I want to give it extra security and protection. The cable tie cable tie mounts you can use wire or pipe cleaners like I'm using here and that can help with uh, signs to attach to your wreath and I just thread pipe cleaners on and uh, then I attach it to the wire frame so that my sign is secure. I cover the back of my wreaths with these um, placemats that I get from Hobby Lobby. It's just a personal preference just to kind of cover up any of the back and just make everything very nice. All right, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this rustic, happy harvest, happy fall um, wreath. I, I Like I said earlier, I do have tons of other wreath video tutorials on my channel. One of the um, Main things that I like to do is make my own signs for my wreaths. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We will talk to you all very soon. God bless.